Well, welcome back, my friends, to Noonday Prayer. Um, for this week, this will be the last one that I do. Tomorrow, I will again be delivering food. Won't do it from my truck, um, but there will be uh, someone else who does it tomorrow. Um, it might be uh, Andy Leone. I can't, I don't remember the schedule, but it may be him. Um, I have a lot of announcements I'm going to give to you um, at the beginning, and then hopefully by the time I start, everybody will be in. And then I'm going to remind everybody at the end to watch them again. Okay, Susan, good to see you on. Uh, the first thing I did want to say is as we work through this pandemic and the way we're doing ministry here, um, I have to say uh, it's wearing on me that um, the ministry I do, I love to do in person and play. And and you can ask uh, Susan Burnham, uh, being able to push her around and, and love on her and hug her and tease her is uh, part of the ministry of presence that I do and I can't do it with people now and uh, I just want you all to know that I'm really starting to uh, I've been doing this but I'm just telling you I miss you and I miss hearing your voices I miss uh, being able to hug you and to pray with you and speak to you and place the body of Christ in your hand and uh, and just pray that uh you're safe in the midst of all this, but uh, know that I do miss you. Um, here go my announcements. Again, make preparations. We have uh, palms, and we have both crosses and the long palms of the fronds that we hang, hand up. Those are out on the table today by the sanctuary. Um, this afternoon, they're to be there, and then tomorrow morning, they're to be there. And so I really encourage you to come and pick those up so that in your own home on Maundy Thursday, if you decide to, uh, you, uh, not Maundy Thursday, on Palm Sunday, you can have your palm fronds or if you get some branches from your own house, you want to spread them through your house or out the door or you process with us, I want you to do whatever it is you may do. Also for Maundy Thursday, please do set up a foot washing station if you are able to with someone in your family and let's, I want you to do um, that foot washing on that day. And then the last thing I did want to tell you is uh, the liturgy for some of these days you might look at because uh, for uh, Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday, Good Friday and Easter, sometimes I don't think we'll do it on Easter, but all the others will have certain pieces that may not exactly be in the prayer book. So please go to the website and uh, or look in your e-news and those should be in there. Uh, just a reminder, Sunday is Palm Sunday. We'll have that at 845. Monday, we'll have Noonday. And then Monday night, I'm going to do a healing service because we do those here and I want people to be able to see what they're like. Tuesday will be Noonday. Wednesday will be Noonday. Thursday, there will be no Noonday because we'll be doing the Maundy Thursday service at 630. Good Friday will be at noon. Saturday, there will be Noonday prayer. And then coming up, on Easter Sunday, um, again, we can't have anybody here, but it'll be 8.45 and then 10 o'clock for children and families. The third thing I wanted to tell you today, this is an important day in the life of our nation, is that today is what is called Autism Awareness Day. I'm actually wearing blue. Blue is the color that we use to bring awareness to autism. Also, I have a great stole that is both in blue and the puzzle pieces that you can see that represents um, uh, bringing awareness to autism. And today I'm wearing blue in Thanksgiving for my friend John, who loves James Taylor the way I love James Taylor. So go, John. Uh, just remember that this day, and in fact, the entire month of April is dedicated to autism to bring awareness and to garner support for those who will help and improve the quality of life for those with autism so that they can lead a full and meaningful life as an integral part of society. And so I really encourage you to be aware of that today and this month. And uh, on Monday night, I'm going to be wearing this stole. So if you say, hey, that's a different stole. No, I'm wearing it for autism awareness and uh, to bring awareness to that on Monday. And we will be praying for that both today and on Monday. Um, the fourth and fifth thing is... Uh, we're really doing a thing called Unite New Braunfels, and it's the churches in town. I'm a part of this. Uh, we're trying to strive to be God's hands in the community together, and one of those things is the Big Serve. Another that's just come up is the Comal Emergency Relief Fund. If you go and you look that up, 
I really would encourage you to go to comalcountycares.com. Again, comalcountycares.com. And on there, you'll see that you can make gifts. They can be as slow. You can do any amount you want, $5 or up to whatever amount you want to. You can do it a one-time gift or a monthly gift. Um, but I really encourage you um, that's this ministry that I was a part of for two hours yesterday, trying to help people in this community that are um, in great need. I want to tell you, I made up a name her, uh, yesterday, uh, the lady I met with and prayed with, one of them, her name is Angel. Uh, she had a great job. She did makeup and she did fashion promotions and things like that. And as you can imagine in this time, uh, there are not many people interested in those things. And so she has been laid off. She had a great income, would commute to Austin to do this work from here. And now she's applying to do a manufacturing job for $10 an hour just to make ends meet in the interim until all that comes back. And so those are the kinds of people that we are helping through that. So I really encourage you um, to be a part of those. All right, that's all my announcements. If you will, let us take a moment and let us um, take a deep breath and be quiet. And uh, then we will get ready to do noonday prayer. All right, our prayer begins on page 138. If you will join with me, let us say together Psalm 113. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Now, our reading today, I put it in the title, but the reading is Mark chapter 10. If you want to do, if you have your Bible and you want to turn to that, I encourage you, Mark chapter 10, and then we're going to do verses 17 through 31. So it's pretty one, it's a pretty familiar story. Again, it was out of the daily readings, the daily office readings, uh, year two for this uh, Thursday in the week of five Lent or fifth week of Lent. So Mark 10, 17 through 31, here's what it says. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, and I love this, he puts there, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. As the disciples were perplexed at these words, and the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Love that verse. Peter began to say to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children in fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. <clears throat> well, I've always been uh, disturbed by this teaching of Jesus, how hard it'll be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of heaven. And he describes it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. You've, we usually think of needles like we have for sewing. Um, but in the, that day, it was probably more when they would have these exterior walls for protection. There would be little, uh, little one-person uh, doors that people could come in and out of. They would close the gate so they couldn't be invaded. And uh, that might be, it would be short enough for a person, very difficult for a camel to get through. That's probably more what he was talking about. But that, that teaching has always kind of disturbed me. It's almost why I almost never play the lottery. And if I ever were to do so, um, I'd give most of it away because I'm pretty sure it would ruin me. It would ruin my focus, which is Jesus. Um, I'd be so focused on the money and what to do with it and who to give it to or how to do that, and I'd lose, <coughs> excuse me, the focus of doing what I am called to do is be a priest. And yet, when I think about what Jesus is saying here, the truth is, I'm very wealthy. If he said to me, Rip, you've got to give up all your positions and co possessions and come follow me, I'm going to be just like the rich man. My house, my cars, all these things. Um, uh, and... Granted, I may not be rich by American standards, but by worldly standards, and surely by the standards Jesus was considering and the way he, he lived, I'm very, very, very wealthy. And I don't think there's any throng, anything wrong with being wealthy except this, that it is hard, is what he's saying, is to be wealthy and to maintain a good focus, a focus on Jesus and on people. For often when we accumulate a lot of wealth, it becomes our focus, and yet, as I see today and we see in the scriptures, Jesus wants us to be concentrating on loving our neighbor and how do we help those people. It's a hard thing to do not to concentrate because truth is, is I want nice things. I work hard, I keep working hard, and I want that reward that comes along with it. But Jesus reminds us that our true reward is not these earthly things, but heavenly things. So again, <coughs> excuse me, if you have verse um, your Bible, I'm going to read verse 29 through 31 again. Truly I tell you, and anytime you see Jesus say, truly I tell you, it's the gold standard. It's, he's really emphasizing this. Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children in fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The greatest reward then is when we put others first and ourselves last is what he's saying. When we give for the benefit of others. And so this day, I really want to encourage you if your income has not changed in if you're like us, we're not spending as much money going out or shopping or doing those kinds of things that we would spend. Um, it's time to grasp onto this message of love the way Jesus calls us to. One of the things that's a blessing about being here is just yesterday, um, I had uh, three people of this church, one longtime member, one brand new member, and, an, and another family that's been uh, here for a few years. All of them contacted me in order to find out, Rip, who can I make gifts to that would be of the most help this day? And as I mentioned in the announcements, please consider the areas of ministry in New Braunfels, the food bank and then the comalcountycares.com or org. I can't remember what I told you all. It was uh, .com, uh, comalcountycares.com, so that we can give to those. And if you uh, missed them, and I've seen some of you have gotten on since I did my announcements, I really ask you, uh, go back and listen. And if you're able in any way, in any gift of any size, please do make a difference in the lives of people in this community. For as we have seen in Jesus says, then we would have treasures not only in this earth beyond the things that we have, but also in heaven. Amen. All right, it's time for our uh, time of prayer. So if you will, I invite you to pray for those that you know. I talked to um, Ray today. <coughs> Excuse me. 
<coughs> Ray Still and um, the young man in our community who died, it's uh, about 40. He knows him and will do a, a service for him at some point. The guy was perfectly healthy, and this thing just really got him and told me a great story about how the the nurses and stuff helped his family by putting a phone up to his ears so that his family could say goodbye to him from a distance. It was a very powerful thing to hear how this is affecting people in our community and how that makes um, our, uh, it just crushes us as pastors, I'm just telling you. So let us definitely lift up not only those who may be affected, those who are helping, but those who are in positions of ministering and what they might do. those who are ill, lift up those who care for them, lift up those who are to minister to them in this social distancing environment. I also pray, Lord, today for uh, hearts to be open to being generous, to be willing to sacrifice some of what we have so that others in this community who have lost um, everything um, might uh, have some hope and some help in this world. One of the things that I am going to do is uh, pray the prayer for Autism Awareness Month. Loving God, bless today in special ways all the children, adults, and families who see the world through the window of autism. May your spirit burn bright in them and all who celebrate and honor the richness of our diversity during this Autism Awareness Month. Grant us, O Lord, the wisdom to see your image reflected in all our differences and to recognize the unique gifts we each have to offer. May the doors of ministry in our church continue to open wide and welcome to all of God's family. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. And then we know we will pray for Justin, who is on the front line with the city of New Braunfels, uh, working to make sure the communications keep going, and if you are joining just now, or you joined after the time of my announcements again, um, I'd ask that you go back and uh, listen to those because they're very important for our preparation for Holy Week and as well as being uh, generous to those in this community. Pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. May his face shine upon you and keep you safe. And may you be able to minister to those in this community in need. Amen. See you next Tuesday.